What's up YouTube? This video we will be covering the top 5 attacking operators in Rainbow Six Siege and I'll be basing this list off of utility and what they bring to the table, the guns and my personal opinion with what works but with other operators. This should be a fun episode and if you haven't yet be sure to sub. We just hit 600 subs and I am forever thankful. Thank you so much. That was my November goal and we hit it with a week left. I find that crazy. So let's try to go for 700 by the end of December. Anyways, let's get right into the video and right into the top five. Getting started with the video, coming in at the number five spot, we have Nomad. I was going to put her higher on the list, but I thought that number five was a pretty solid spot, and it's because of her utility slash gun selection. I wish she had more guns in it to see what she has. But anyways, Nomad in this current meta in late year 5, early year 6 is a vital operator and the meta is pretty much shields and flanks and runouts on defensive side. And it's very important that you have Nomads down so they can't do the pesky garage runout on Clubhouse or any other basic flanks. Drones work too, obviously, but you're required to have someone actually watching them, which would only work when they are dead. Continuing, Nomad has two guns, like I mentioned, which is the basic AR and the 21 round ARX, which is my weapon of choice with the Nomad with a two time scope. My guy Odie is a beast on Nomad and he's helped me become a better Nomad player myself in recent times and I'll be releasing a video on how to play Nomad coming soon because you guys requested it. The guns are a matter of preference in my opinion because I have a high rank friends for the ARX or the latter and if you're better with one over the other why not use it. I also like how she has three air jabs. I feel as if that's a great number and the only weakness I have for Nomad is that in recent times people have figured out and the game has made it easier to shoot them off the walls or door frames. So you have to place them pretty far away or where they'll run into it so defenders cannot shoot them when they do the run out because that could cause disaster to the team. And now coming at the number four spot, I have Sledge and to me he's picked a lot. I use him all the time and he's very viable with some great weapons and utility. For instance, he has two needs which you can use to break Malusis, shields, etc. Or you can even go underneath and need the enemies below if you time it correctly. It's super useful for when an enemy is in a position of control and you really can't just take a gunfight without a high chance of dying. A common below nade spot is under the half walled armory lockers on border and when you break the vent window you can just nade right above it and then it gets the guy half wall. Sledge's weapons are also very good with his AR containing the 1.5 times and the 2.5 times making him versatile on the sights for long range and close range gunfights or maps. And he also has the Pocket Rocket, also known as the SMG-11. This thing is an absolute different breed and is definitely makes Sledge a better option, especially over the ladder of soft reachers like Buck who lost his nades in ACOG. His hammer is also super useful obviously for destroying things like the floor and maestro cams and such so you don't have to waste other utility on it. Overall, Sledge is the overall great operator and I just love using him and he just slams. Continuing at the number 3 spot, we have yet another soft breacher and her name is Zofia. Personally, I use a ton of Zofia and it's not because she's cool. It's because she's simply, her utility and weapons are way too good. Her main gun uses does 45 freaking damage and she has Ash and Ella's abilities combined. As an attacker, it would let you play vertical, gain info, enemies hiding, stun and push, open up holes below or in walls of Ferranza sights. Possibilities are honestly endless and it's just her guns are insane. And continuing on her weapons, if you're like my guy Slim, he has made a whole ass video on her LMG, which to me is insane and is very broken and her pistol also isn't that bad. Like it has no recoil, it has every sight in the game, the LMG. And you have 150 bullets, I think 3 mags, it's just, it's way too stupid. And to top it all off, she could choose breach charges or a claymore so you can have a quick flank watch or window jump out which helps her if she wants her pelt on a window with the risks of getting jumped out on. I typically do this when I play maps like Consulate and it's really useful to kind of like help pinch the enemies and force them into positions where my team could push them. So yes. Moving on to the next number. And closing in on the number two spot we have Ace. Now, when Ace introduced, we already knew he was going to be a crazy operator, and even with his recent nerf to his ability, he's still insane to the game. Ace basically just three of three uh, breachers, and you throw him at the wall, and it kind of slows and shows down, and then you can, it breaks the wall open, kind of like Hibana, except a little better. 
And what really is the main kicker of Ace is the AK-12 that he's given. And it is statistically one of the best guns in the game. And you can have the option of having the 2.0 times scope on it. And you have an angle grip or a vertical grip, which is very useful depending on how you control recoil and the type of player you are. And it, it's just honestly a blessing how versatile they made Ace. With the, with the fact that you can get hatches with ease, you can stay in cover when opening up the wall, you can only make peak holes, so that's not like Thermite where when you open something, you're opening up the entire fucking map. <laughs> um, and the smoke grenades are also really useful, you know, when you're smoking out angles to go for plant or to make a play, you know, it's just honestly, it's just like he's an overall essential operator, like you need, you need him on your team if you're going for like a wall. Or, you can use a different option, which we'll get into in the next number, or you can have both, which is also why these are the number one and two spots, because of how versatile and composition-based they are. And with Ace, you can also use him as a fragging operator, after you've done the dirty work with him, because of his crazy AK-12 weapon. And now we have the number one, the cream of the crop, creme de la creme spot, the number one spot, and I have Maverick for the top five attackers. Now, like I said, this list, it's in order, essentially just top five. It, maybe number one isn't exactly Maverick being the best. It's just five uh, operators in order uh, that I believe are the top five best. Uh, but you could interchange a couple, you know, depending on what happens. And why I have Maverick at the number one spot is because of how well he works with the team and his team composition. You need the bandit soft? Maverick got that. You need a hard breach? Maverick can make the wall soft. Enemy stuck in a corner? Maverick can nade him. His guns are also pretty effective with the M4 getting the 1.5 times scope. He just works well with all operators and can always fit him into your roster and willing to sacrifice anything because of how versatile he is. And that's why I have Ace and Maverick as the number 2 in 1 spot and none of those in general because of how well they work with the team. Ace has a smoke grenade to help with the planner and help him plant with also his really good gun and the fact that he can open up lines of sights and hard breach. Maverick can do the same thing. He could open up lines of sights, open up breach, nade people, has a really good gun, and essentially it's just an all-around awesome operator. It's just viable for the team. That's why they're banned a lot because they're so good, and yeah. Now what's the top five list without some honorable mentions, right? It's hard to pick a solid five operators out there when there's almost 30, since they all do different things and have different roles on the team. A definite honorable mention would be IQ for her insane gadget and her weapon choice as the G8 with the trusty angled grip or her commando with the 1.5 times, which is also a super viable second option, and the third wheel of them all with the AUG. A utility can clear pretty much anything to help to support players while gunning people down with the OP G8A1. The last honorable mention is going to also have to be Habana as her gun selection is also really good with her Type 21 and the Bearing 9 secondary. A whole ass SMG. Something else really good about her is that coming in the new season after Shadow Legacy, which is called Neon Dawn, she gets adjustable charges to make the most out of her pellets, which is a good buff, and I'm glad to see she's only getting better. Like, it's just really good to see that, this, that the game has a lot of really good operators, and there's a lot of options, and it's fun because you can create, like, a different rosters and be really good with all of them. And that's why I love Siege, because it's so diverse, and a lot of these operators are very versatile. I know I've been saying that word a lot, but that's what they are. And so those are the honorable mentions, and that is the top five attackers in Rainbow Six Siege, in my opinion, and I base it off their utility, versatility, usefulness, composition of their operators, the weapons, and just how I fuck with them personally. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, question, which would you remove or add? Let me know down below. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys with the next video. See you out.